Hey there, Chelsea here, Monarch Alley. I'm a vintage lover, thrifter, and part-time reseller. Today I have my weekend what sold video for you where I go over what sold for me over the weekend. <laughs> I guess it's pretty self-explanatory. Okay, so the first item that sold for me over the long weekend, and I am including uh, Monday, Martin Luther King Jr. Day because um, I thought that USPS was closed on Monday, so I didn't ship out my items, but then my mail person came and I'm so confused. So yeah, the first item that sold on Friday was actually a Nancy Drew book. Um, I know that these in large collections can do really well. The individual books seem to sell for lower prices. I'm sure there are some rare, like, good finds here and there. But anyway, the one that I had, I had used for, like, decoration on my bookshelf for a while. And I just decided it was time to kind of... I don't know, get rid of things, right? So I sold it for $6.80, which is not that great of a price. Um, I had it originally listed for $8 with free shipping. And on Facebook Marketplace, I've been running a sales promotion. So it actually sold for cheaper than that. What was weird was that the person that was trying to buy it had some kind of Facebook payment issue. And so I told her I could do PayPal, no problem. And she said, yeah, I've been having this problem a lot. And a lot of people just aren't getting paid by Facebook and they prefer PayPal anyway. I was like, oh, never heard of that. But hope I'm getting paid by Facebook. <laughs> so anyway, if you have any insight to that, feel free to drop a comment below. So anyway, with my 15% off promotion, this book sold for $6.80 with free media mail shipping. Um, it was about $3 to ship it. So in all, I probably made like $2.50 off of this book, but I really wasn't trying to make big money off of it. Getting things back out into the world. Another sale that I made that I don't have with me, so I'll show a screenshot, is this high chair. It was actually my youngest son's high chair, and he has very much grown out of it, and it was taking up space in the dining room. I'm like, okay, I have to get rid of this thing. I asked a few friends with kids if they wanted it. It's a cool Ikea high chair. No one wanted it, so I sold it for $25 on Facebook Marketplace. Uh, I did drive about 10, 15 miles to meet up with this person. They were coming from a place that's about 45 miles away, so we kind of met in the middle, which is cool. Um, she said that she's really struggling to find high chairs, which surprised me. So um, I don't know if there's like a market to flip those locally in your area, but apparently in my area, there's a shortage. However, I will say I had it listed for like two months. So eh. anyway, my dining room is looking a lot less cluttered now. And this person is very excited to have a new high chair. And $25 cash is great too. And in fact, my next sale was a direct sale as well to one of my friends that we, I actually skated with. We played roller derby together. And now she's she's been reselling for a while, like on and off. And she's getting back into it. And anyway, she saw me post this like bleached out um, Hanes long sleeve tee and she had to have it. So I gave it to her for $10. Um, again, it's a, you know, she got the friend discount, right? And then also, um, since it was local, it was just nice to be able to like, drop it off at her house. You know, she Venmoed me the $10 and then the deal is done. It's pretty cool to avoid fees in that way. Those three items I've already like dropped off or shipped off. So now we're getting into the stuff that I need to package up right away. <laughs> so next I have this um, Stitch plushie. He's so cute. I love finding Lilo and Stitch stuff. I feel like it usually sells pretty quickly for me. I think I had this guy listed for maybe about a month. I think I listed him right before Christmas, but it was probably too late for the shipping deadline, you know what I'm saying? So people were hesitant. But what's cool is he has new a tag and my son kept trying to steal him. I cannot let my kids in my office because they find all the toys and stuff and try to like steal it back into the living room. Um, so yeah, Stitch sold for um, on eBay for $12.75. I think I had him listed for $15, but I'm also running a promotion on eBay. It was some advice that was given to me um, a week or two ago when I was kind of hoping to restart, like jump up my sales a little bit. And I would definitely say it's working. Um, the promotion on Facebook Marketplace and on eBay is just like a, a blanket promotion across all items that I have listed, which is pretty easy and nice. And I think at the end of the sale, it notifies people that the sale is going to be ending soon. And so I think they're more likely to make those purchases. So I feel like I got a few of those this weekend, which is cool. So Stitch sold for $12.75. The buyer did pay for shipping as well. Next is a testament that all seasonal things sell all year round. I have a Halloween haunted house here. Um, I picked this up for probably... Uh, oh, ooh, I got the tag on it. I better take that off. Picked this up for $2.99 and it sold for $11.05. Um, I think I've been slowly dropping the price. There's nothing super special about this piece or this brand, except that it does light up. And what's cool is I was able to put batteries in it and test it and show in the pictures that it lights up. So that's kind of cool. And that's in the box. This sold for $11.05 on Facebook Marketplace as part of my promotion deal and the buyer did pay for shipping. 
This next piece is um, an Allegra, oh, you might not be able to see it because I'm a little close to my camera, but um, a skull t-shirt or long sleeve tee. It is a plus size shirt by this brand Allegra K. Um, when I looked it up, like some pieces do okay. Um, I think I listed this for about 15, ended up selling for 12 on Mercari, which is fine with me. It was given to me um, by a friend. She, she periodically will give me, you know, a bag of clothes and I pick out some stuff to sell. And yeah, this one probably sold in about a month or two. So maybe it's not a bad brand. So $12 on Mercari and the buyer did pay shipping. This next sale I'm super excited about because it's something I picked up on Instinct and it worked out and you know, that's a good feeling when you pick up a, an item of clothing just because it's cool, not because of the brand and someone actually buys it like quickly for a good price. Okay, let me show you, let me show you. So this is the denim jacket that was in my last thrift haul. Um, I've actually sold a few pieces from my last thrift haul already, so that's exciting. Um, but anyway, I'll, I could talk more about that later, but this is a Route 66 um, denim jacket. Oh, sorry. It's quite heavy. It's quilted. I think it would actually be pretty warm. It's going to California. I love that it's like a denim jacket, but the varsity style. And so I wasn't sure where to list this, but I did see some comps in the $30 to $40 range. So I listed it at $50 um, on most platforms. I think on Facebook, I randomly made it $60. I don't know. I was thinking of my sale. So anyway, I got a an offer um, for 35 on Mercari and I said, hey, I just listed this like I would do 40. Like I know, let's not be petty over $5, but I knew that this was a special piece and um, I literally got that offer like hours after listing it and I was getting a lot of likes. So the person came back, they were playing hardball and they came back and said, okay, let me know if you would sell it for 35. So we just kind of went our separate ways. So then I got an offer for $40 also on Mercari um, from a different buyer and I decided to accept it. I feel really good about $40 from this coat and it sold within a week of being listed. I think actually in like two days after being listed, but I'm wondering if I could have got it a little, got a little bit more for it. Like perhaps I should have priced it for 60 or $75. So I could have got like the $50 range. I don't know, but I'm still really thrilled that this flipped so quickly. I'm glad I trusted my instinct and I think I paid six or $7 for this jacket. After Mercari takes their cut, I make $34.54 and the buyer did pay for shipping for this coat. For funsies, the other items that have sold from the haul, I think I have two other pieces that have sold already. One I already mentioned, it was the bleached out Hanes t-shirt that I sold locally. That was just mentioned like moments ago, but that was from my most recent thrift haul, which is a really fun haul. Like I got some really cool clothes. Um, I'm starting to get like excited about selling clothes again. I don't know. And then the other item that sold is um, the Bats sweatshirt. Uh, I sold it to uh, an Instagram friend, YouTuber, Katie Reads. She watched my haul, which I really appreciate, and dropped me a comment. So I sold that to her for $16 shipped. Again, I'm just excited to be able to give deals to my supporters and the people I know. And it's really cool to know that she's going to be getting that Bat School sweatshirt. I'm also super driven to list everything in that haul because I told myself I am not thrifting until everything is listed from that haul. So this weekend I finished taking pictures of everything else that I haven't listed yet. And I'm, I, I think I have about six pieces left to list. So in a couple days I can go thrifting again. Okay. Okay. Sorry. Let's get back to what sold. I have a couple items left. Um, next is an athleta jacket. I don't think I would recommend picking this up because I have, sorry, it's all wrinkly. Um, it's a really pretty like lavender, purple, blue, periwinkle. I don't know how to describe it, but a really pretty color of jacket. It's like um, a lightweight, stretchy material. And I thought it was pretty cool, but it sat and sat and sat. So um, I ended up selling this for $17 on Facebook Marketplace. That sold as part of my 15% uh, off promotion. So yeah, I don't know if maybe it's because I think this is an older Athleta tag. If you're an Athleta expert, you know, drop a comment and let us know. Um, but yeah, I really like selling their leggings. Um, but I don't know, the jacket didn't do as well. Anyway, excited to get it out the door. Like I said, the buyer paid 17, um, Facebook marketplace fees are very reasonable. So I ended up making 15 on this jacket and the buyer did pay for shipping as well. And next we have some really cool vintage, um, candle holders. These are like a kind of an S shape with a daisy or lotus flower shape. So they're actually supposed to be like this, um, sitting on a table and it's a set of two and they're gold and they're really cool. Um, I can see these looking really neat, um, in a lot of different ways or even like spray painted if you want to like make them black or like a really funky color. So, or they could be cool wall hangings too, I suppose. Um, if you don't put the candles in them, but yeah, I got these a while ago. I think they're in a recent haul or not recent haul, maybe 
from the summer from uh, this great place that I love to get like vintage housewares. And I got these for like $2. They ended up selling for $20 on Poshmark, which is pretty cool. I had sent an offer to Likers and the person actually accepted. Guys, I cannot tell you how many offers I have sent in the last two weeks to try to stir up traffic in my Poshmark store. The key is just listing, listing, listing. But um, I have been trying to send like good offers, 20, 30%. I feel like it's a really good offer, especially with that shipping discount that is mandatory. And anyway, I just have not been getting a lot of accepts. So when someone accepted my offer, I just got really excited. <laughs> Uh, especially because, yeah, this is a piece that I picked up that I just thought was really neat. So it's cool that someone else thought it was neat and wanted to buy it. So anyway, these are also going out today. And this is the last item that I sold over the weekend. So for a part-time reseller that is like trying to jumpstart all my stores after a couple weeks away, I'm feeling really good with the type of traffic that I got. I'm really happy with that. And I'm excited too to be listing all the items for my recent thrift haul. Tell me, what are you really like pumped up about right now. Like I said, I'm kind of getting excited about listing clothing again. It must be like in quarter four, I was just thinking of like toys and housewares and decor. And now I'm like thinking clothes again, spring, I don't know. But tell me, what are you uh, really pumped up about? What are you thrifting? What are you sourcing uh, to resell? Since I have to ship all of these items out anyway, I thought it might be fun to kind of show a little bit of my process when shipping some items. So I'm not going to show you everything that sold this weekend, how I'm going to ship it, but I'm going to handpick like three items. So I'm going to start with these vintage um, candlestick holders that I showed you just a minute ago. Uh, because these sold on Poshmark, my shipping options are really awesome. <laughs> I could ship in like any box. So I'm actually going to reuse a regional rate A box that someone sent to me, uh, someone sent an item to me in, and I'm going to put these in bubble wrap and um, yeah, wrap them up really good so they don't jumble around and put them in the box. So I'm gonna do that now. Luckily, these aren't like actually breakable. So really a layer or two will protect the like petals from getting wonky. You know, you just don't want something to bend. So my instinct actually was to put these in like a padded, um, padded envelope, but I was just worried that they, the little metal might bend. So I just, I don't know. You know, you don't want an item to arrive, especially a unique vintage item to arrive damaged because you really just can't replace it, generally speaking. So I wrapped each of these once and then I'm just gonna give them like one more wrap like together in a larger piece. I got this bubble wrap from American Bubble Boy. I used the Pure Hustle podcast um, code and I really like this bubble wrap. So yeah, this is going to fit like perfectly in this regional rate A box. Um, there is a little room left in here. So I'll probably put some packing paper or like a larger, um, what are those called? Air bubbles to save the space. Cause I don't want stuff jiggling around in here. Like when you have a breakable or even just like a a hard good item you just don't want it like flinging around in there because you can mess up surprisingly even with a book or something like you could mess up the edges it could get like damage so anyway i'm just gonna like fill this up to make sure it isn't shaking around and then do the shake test so you close it see right now you can hear that it's moving around and that's not good for your item so when i put the packaging supplies in there we should be all set I'll tape that up, print my label on my roller printer and move on. Now, if I were selling this on a different platform and I needed to know the exact weight of it, um, with Poshmark, you can mail anything up to five pounds using any USPS packaging. But if I need to know through eBay or Mercari, I don't know what the uh, weight was, then I would use my handy dandy shipping scale that I love. I actually have the scale linked in my like Amazon affiliate links below because I love it so much. So it's just like, it's a pretty heavy duty scale. But what I love about it, is it has the read like um, as an attachment. So you can like put a really big box on here that might normally cover what this, the weight is. Um, and it won't matter because the weight is like, you can move it all around. So this is pretty cool. I have it linked in my Amazon affiliates. So let's find out what it is. Okay, Whew, I'm out of breath, getting so excited. Okay, so it says, wait for it to be zero. And I put the package on there. It says 10 ounces. Can you see it? It's so cool. I love the shipping scale. All right, my next item is this stitch plush toy. So because this is plush and it's it's really just not gonna get damaged, I could put this in a padded envelope or just a poly mailer. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to, again, reuse um, an Amazon poly mailer that was sent to me. That's my favorite way to get shipping supplies. And yeah, luckily for me, all I have to do is put this in here. Um, I did not check if it's large enough, so let's find out. I did take care to like tuck the tag in so that it wouldn't get 
ripped in shipping. Um, the person that bought this actually messaged me and asked a question about it because they were buying it for their new nephew or something like that. So I know that it's probably going to be a gift and I want it to be careful. So anyway, the tag is tucked in there nicely and it fits beautifully. So now all I'll do is put my thank you card in there and then fold it over. And I think I could actually reuse this same sticky, which is kind of cool. So I'll be able to just bloop, bloop. There you go. So I sold this on eBay. I want to know how much it weighs to buy my label. So again, I'll turn my scale on. Um, I am only going to weigh it with the packaging supplies included. So that way we don't accidentally go over. This is really lightweight because it's a stuffed animal. So um, yeah, we're at eight ounces. We're good to go. So that'll be a pretty cheap, <laughs> cheap. That'll be a pretty cheap shipping label. And yeah, that's how I ship plush, generally speaking. Okay, so the last item that I'm going to show you is this haunted house. I want to show this because it is a breakable item, and I know a lot of people get nervous to ship stuff like this, but shipping an item like this really doesn't have to be stressful. So the key is to just make sure you have everything that you need. You know, like when you're trying to pack something breakable and you don't have a big old roll of bubble wrap, for example, it can be really problematic. So this is the American Bubble Boy bubble wrap that I have and I am just going to like you first you need to look it over and see if there's a particular area that needs attention so for example this little paper tree like ooh, that could like easily break off so I probably need to watch that what's nice is that I'm shipping this in a box in a box so that will give it added protection because I have this box here I'll pad this up put it in the box and then I'll probably put one more um like wrap a bubble wrap around the main box when I put it in the shipping box. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Okay, this is like maybe an unconventional choice, but I'm actually using like a little Kleenex, like a little tissue to go around that paper tree um, to give it a little structure before I bubble wrap it. Ah, it's so funny. One thing that's helpful too when packaging odd shaped items like this is to secure your um, bubble wrap with some packing tape. So yeah, that's what I'm doing. I'm just kind of like, I don't know, making sure it stays close to the item because how effective can it be if it's not, if it's just like loosey goosey. All right, so we have the item bubble wrapped. Hopefully it will still fit in the box. Probably should have checked that, but I think it'll be fine. <laughs> so yeah, cause it probably originally came with like a whole foam piece that protected it. And I actually have one more like square. So I'm actually gonna throw it on top so it doesn't shake around in its box. So yeah, I feel really good about this. And then I have the perfect size eBay box, which is pretty cool. It's eight by eight by eight. Whoop. Okay, it's an 8x8x8 eight 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 eBay box. I got these with like my most recent eBay store coupon, which is something you get when you subscribe um, to like an actual eBay store. It's my first time using the coupon, so I feel really legit, like a real reseller. All right, as promised, wrapping the box in some bubble wrap. Give it a little extra cushion, you know what I'm saying? And then we'll put that in there. I didn't check to make sure it fits, but oh, it totally fits perfectly. So I have gaps. So once again, I'm going to need to either put more bubby, bubby wrap, put more bubble wrap in here or surround it in packaging tape. At this point, I feel like my breakable item is very secure. So using packaging, I said packaging tape, but I meant packing like paper. Um, I feel like would really work to protect this box because I bubble wrapped it really tightly in the main box. So I hope I'm not like rambling. I hope this is making sense for you. Um, this is generally called like a floating box. Um, when you put like the item inside of a box and then inside of another box with padding between it. And it is a strategy to help protect breakable items. So I hope that this helped you here. Hold on. I'm going to get real cool. Okay. <laughs> So I hope this helped you with not only see what's selling right now, but to find some ideas on how to ship these items. And it certainly helped me to, you know, chat with a friend while I package up uh, the items going out. That's always fun. So yeah, that's how I ship out some items. If you have additional comments, drop them below. If you haven't already, please consider liking this video or dropping a comment or even subscribing to my channel. It would really mean a lot to me. I have a lot of fun ideas for videos that I can't wait to put out this year. It's 2022, man. You just, we got to just do this thing. We got to make it our own. And that's really what I'm trying to do. So anyway, I will stop babbling now. I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Talk to you later. Bye.